So I'm a wedding photographer here in Toronto, Ontario, but I don't think wedding photography in itself is a real kind of photography. It's more like three or four different types of photography blended into one with the added pressure of having to get everything right on the first go or else you miss it. And in order to be a good wedding photographer, you have to be good at all of these types of photography. So that's what I wanna talk about today. So this video is for photographers who want to get better at wedding photography, but maybe aren't shooting enough weddings to feel like they can really improve their skills. Instead of shooting weddings to get better at certain types of photography, try shooting these different types of photography on their own and getting better at those individually will make you a better wedding photographer. And some of them might not be what you expect. Product photos may not be what first comes to mind when you think of weddings, but capturing the details of the day is super important and one of the things that separates you from a family friend who's shooting the wedding on an iPhone. At the start of the day, you're gonna get product shots of the watch, cologne, shoes, invitations, wedding rings, wedding dress, and later when you get to the reception area, you need photos of flowers, name cards, and really anything else nice on the tables. So how can you practice this at home? Well, the good thing is you don't need a whole home studio to practice your product photography. And in fact, even if you have one, I wouldn't recommend you use it because on the wedding day, you're gonna be at the bride and groom's house or at the venue where they're getting ready. You don't have the time to set up an entire studio in order to get the lighting you like. You're gonna have maybe 10, 15 minutes to set everything up and get nice shots. So your best bet is to find the biggest window in your house and set up some flat lays right next to the window and use that as your lighting. Remember, you're practicing for a wedding. So in order to be more efficient on the wedding day, try and find some layouts that you like now and remember them so that you can lay stuff out quickly on the wedding day and you're not trying to move things around to figure out what looks nice. Pro tip, if you wanna remember some layouts, save some images on your phone. So when you're taking photos of the layouts, you just quickly glance at your phone, remember what it looks like and lay them out. All right, this one is probably one you were expecting. Having strong portraits is super important. Yes, a lot of your photos throughout the day are just documenting what's happening, but the portraits that you get with just the bride and groom are probably the most special ones of the day and most likely the ones that they're gonna take and print off and hang up on their walls or frame next to their bed. So it's important that you nail these ones. Practicing your portraits is as simple as finding a friend and finding a place where you can shoot. I have lots of nature trails around my house to choose from, so that's usually what I go for. Then hit up your friends and say, Hey, can I take your portrait for free? Taking portraits of a single person is fine to practice your lighting and composition, but the big challenge on the wedding day is posing a couple that is maybe a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit camera shy, and doesn't really know what they're doing. So ideally when you're practicing, find a friend who has a partner that they can shoot with together, and then you can practice instructing people who aren't normally in front of the camera how to pose. This is one of the biggest differentiators between a real professional photographer and someone who's just starting out is knowing how to talk to people and make them feel comfortable in front of the camera. Because unless you're a model or an actor and you're in front of a camera all the time, 95% of people are going to be a little bit uncomfortable and not know what they're doing when you take their photo. So you have to be there to confidently reassure them that they look good and tell them exactly what they need to do. Also, if you're struggling to figure out how to pose people, search some poses on Pinterest and save them to your phone and then refer to them during your practice shoots just during the practice shoots. You don't wanna be pulling out your phone to look at poses when you're with your clients. Event photography. This is probably the most boring, but you need to know how to do it because documenting the things that happen on the wedding day is probably one of the most important jobs you have. The nice part about these types of photos is they don't have to be super artsy or super fancy with really nice lighting and things posed properly. You really need basic composition, basic lighting, because the most important part of these photos is that you're capturing the emotions on people's faces, the things that are happening. So when it comes to event photos or documentary photos, depending on what you wanna call them, the tricky part is not the camera settings, it's being able to get those photos fast and quick and move around and make sure you don't miss those important moments. It's one thing to take a well-composed, properly exposed photo, and it's an entirely other thing to be able to do that in a split second when you see something happening that you wanna take a photo of. This one's hard to practice, but the best way to get good at this type of photography is just to know your camera settings like the back of your hand. When you walk into a room, set up your exposure so that it's good to go right off the bat, and then maybe you're just making minor changes to your shutter speed or ISO. On a wedding day, you can't afford to spend some time fiddling around with your camera and figuring out settings. You need to know them. Landscape photography is maybe not what comes to mind when you think about shooting weddings, but it's one of those little things that's really gonna separate you from the family member with the little rebel camera that's shooting the wedding for $200. At some point during the day, possibly between the ceremony and the reception, you'll have a little bit of time to walk the venue and capture some nice photos of the scenery. Especially if it's a higher end venue, you really wanna capture the nice outside area, capture the whole building. If you have a drone, maybe get some drone shots. Because remember, with all your images from the day, you're painting a picture of the entire experience. Yes, the walking down the aisle, first kiss, Portraits with just the two of them are the really important shots, but you want your bride and groom to look back on these photos and remember the entire feeling of the whole day. And capturing the surrounding scenery can be a big part of that. So how do you practice this one? Well, go out and take landscape photos. I've talked about landscape photos before, and when I do, there's always someone that says, oh, I just don't live in a nice place. I can't take landscape photos. There's nothing nice, no landscapes around me. And I can understand that feeling, 
but with some practice, you should be able to make even really boring places look nice in landscape photos. In fact, it gives you even more of an edge because if you can make a boring place look really nice in a landscape photo, imagine what you're gonna be able to do with a really fancy wedding venue. But those are all the tips I have for you. If you practice each of these types of photography, you'll be getting some killer shots at your next wedding. Are there any genres of photography that I missed? Let me know in the comments. What type of photos do you think you need to practice in order to be a better wedding photographer? Also, if you're interested in the camera gear that I use on a regular basis, there is a link down in the description. You can check that out. Down there, you also find links to my TikTok and Instagram where I post almost daily. So go follow me there to stay updated. And if you want to book me for your wedding, link is down there too. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.